I am a musician trained as a classical pianist, but what I'm more engaged in now is singing. And one of the things that kind of represents how central that is for me, my screensaver is a piano, which is a way of reminding me, even in the place that I do research, that I do clinical practice, that I am an artist as well. I would like to see worship and corporate worship be more transformational, reflect more the incarnational ministry of Christ, understanding the role of embodiment and the things that engage the congregation and contribute to their own spiritual formation. We did a study recently where we studied 26 worship leader exemplars, and these are people that were nominated based on their ability to engage folks in worship. So our questions were really, what does embodiment mean for them? What does that look like? And what is it they're doing that's engaging people cognitively, affectively, behaviorally, as well as spiritually? So in asking them about this, one of the things they talked about was the bodily piece. And of course, what's happening in our body is often a reflection of what we're thinking. So what we called it was synchronous. This notion of are your bodily movements synchronous with what's going on for you? Now, so the ideal thing, just like you'd want rhythmically everybody to be in the right rhythm and in tune, then you ideally would want, for instance, a worship leader team to be in sync in that way. But since we're human and we're not always spiritually on the same wavelength, what was fascinating was to hear when they said we were not. What happens when I'm not feeling like I wanna lead worship today? Some people would wanna just power themselves to make it through worship today. That's one way of worship leading. On the other hand, those who said, I'm not feeling it today, you know, I really don't have the energy. Confessional, they confess that to the team. The team either would support them in that, or sometimes the congregation actually encourage the worship leader to worship God. So what is the ideal preparation? The ideal preparation is to always be reminded that the power comes from God. So that gets caught, if you will, by the congregation. They're picking up the preparation, they're picking up the yieldedness in the moment, and they're also picking up a sense of humility, which is what we're also looking at as well. So there's something powerful about that because there's a way in which if we lead off in that way, then people both get an opportunity to share from wherever the place they are, but also see somebody else say, there's a spark, they get inspired because, oh wow, that person is doing that. Maybe I will do this. <laughs>